Julian Emanuel is BTIG's chief equity and derivative strategist. Julian, great to have you with us. Um, you like a lot of the cyclical sectors. And before we get to that, I want to ask you the question we started the show off with, and that is, will rising rates kill the tech rally? They w it won't kill the tech rally, but it's certainly going to cause what we think probably a little bit more protracted period of underperformance. Look, if you think about it, and you think about the evolution of the economy and the evolution of markets, uh, first thing is that financials outperformance, which we expect to be not a multi-week uh, or, you know, several weeks phenomenon, but a multi-quarter phenomenon, is part and parcel of every full bull market that you've seen for the last 50 years. So from that perspective, it's a positive that we have that coming in, in front of us. But look, the issue here is that We've never, first of all, come from this low a level of yields, absolutely. So it's very difficult to gauge the, the behavior uh, of these stocks, which are proving to be very sensitive. Um, ultimately, to us, you're going to get to a point where, again, the valuations start to look more in line in terms of technology, and there'll be a buy because the earnings power long term is absolutely there. Julian, I'm curious because a lot of um, other firms out there put out their so-called magic number, the level at which yields will matter to stock investors in terms of valuation. Is that sort of a fool's errand? I mean, you, you're talking about this as sort of, you know, we've never been here. We've never come off of such a low base before. So we don't really know what the playbook is going to be. Well, it isn't a fool's errand, uh, Melissa, because really it, it's more to us not what that level is. But how you get there, I mean, uh, several weeks ago, we raised our year-end 10-year yield uh, price forecast from 150 to 170. Again, still in the absolute scheme of things, very, very attractive, very, very sedate. You know, you showed that 30-year chart uh, of yields, and that barely registers, quite honestly. But the, the problem that the market is having over the last week and a half or so is the speed at which we've gotten to where we've gotten and the way markets are they tend to extrapolate the near-term behavior into the next several weeks. And then all of a sudden, there's this fear that we're going to run away to the upside. Well, we're going to hear from Chairman Powell uh, this week. We're going to hear from a lot of Fed speakers. And they're all going to tell you that that's not likely the case. All right. So you like financials, energy, and industrials clearly levered to reopening, to a, an economy that is heating up. These are plays for, for the entire year, you, you think? Yeah, well, we think actually potentially longer. Again, look at financials. Their relative performance versus the S&P 500 is basically making a double bottom that goes back to the depth of the financial crisis. So you have a long runway. You look at something like energy, a shade over 4% of the exposure in the S&P 500. Yes, it's up from 25 but the 10-year average is closer to 9%. So you could see a 10, 20, 30% advance in energies, even if the index at the broad level sort of trended flat for, uh, for the near term. All right, Julian, great to speak with you. Thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.